More on our top story now. A former assistant commissioner of the Metropolitan Police and former head of counter-terror policing says the perpetrators of far-right violence seen across the UK in the past week should be prosecuted under counter-terrorism laws. And Neil Basu joins me now. Uh, good afternoon. Why do you think that? Oh, good afternoon and thank you for inviting me on. Uh, with the greatest of respect, before I answer that question, I'd rather be on your show talking about our condolences for 13 bereaved and traumatised families in a community in Southport. And instead, over the last week, it's been hijacked by some of the most extreme violence that police officers have had to deal with on the UK mainland in many, many years. Now, some of those offences, we've talked about violent disorder. There, there have been many public order offences, many offences against the person. Some of those carry huge sentences themselves. But some of what we've seen surrounding mosques with worshippers inside, trying to set them alight. There are some offences which, in my view, very clearly have crossed the Rubicon into terrorist offences. Now, I know that my successors will be sitting down with prosecutors and discussing every offence in detail. It's very difficult to prove ideological intent when you're talking about terrorism. But I think it should be a warning to people who want to get involved in these offences that they are, this is becoming a national security issue. Do you think that governments have been too slow to proscribe some of these organisations as terrorist organisations? In fact, I'd go so far to say, is, do you think there's been a two-tiered approach to prescribing terror organisations? I don't think there's been a two-tier approach. I'm very familiar with the process that has to happen for prescription, and it's incredibly detailed, and the bar is set very, very high. So I think in the past it's been almost impossible to reach that bar, uh, and don't forget that we talk about far-right as though that was the issue. Far-right in and of itself can be seen as a legitimate political argument. And if you want to protest peacefully and lawfully, you have a right to do that in a liberal democracy. It is the unlawful, violent protest and the increase in ferocity of attacks and criminality that is putting it into the extreme right-wing terrorism space. Now, we have prescribed those organisations before. Amber Rudd did it with National Action in 2016. And that prescription allowed us to dismantle that particular group and make sure they didn't have an effect going forward. I know my successors will be looking very carefully at the individuals and the organisations who may be behind some of the organisation of these events and seeing whether they fit that bar. And if they do, I would expect them to put that case before the Home Secretary. Who and what are we talking about there? Well, in the past, um, we have seen violent protest organised and attended by groups such as the uh, English Defence League. Now, the EDL is not an organisation that exists anymore, according to them. Um, but there are other organisations that sprang up after national action which are well known to my, um, to my successors, and there will be new ones since I've retired. Those organisations uh, and also other people on social media who are amplifying this issue are people that we need to look at seriously for what they might be doing to foment violence across the UK. Look, I have to ask, because when people think of terrorism in the UK, they may have a preconceived idea of what it is, and, and in recent times they perhaps assume that it's Islamic in its background, or Islamist, I, I, I should say, when clearly, judging by what you're saying, it isn't the case. Do you think the system is inherently prejudiced in, in a certain way? Do you think that that, that, that exists, that is stopping acting in this way against white-led groups, far-right groups, etc.? No, that's not the case at all. And there's a very dangerous rhetoric going around about two-tier policing, which is absolute nonsense. But back when I was serving in this position, and in fact, when I was the deputy to the head of counterterrorism dealing with the operations, we did have a problem that we did not see the potential threat of a rising far right, which was tipping into extreme right wing terrorism. And the reality is, is we serve the law. So if you break the law, it doesn't matter what you look like or what your ideology is. If you commit a terrorist offence, you should be dealt with under the Terrorism Act. If you commit a public order offence, you should be dealt with under the Public Order Act. If you commit hate crime, you should be dealt with under that legislation. I don't think there's anything two tier about it. I think it's about whether you've reached that bar. And when I was serving, I said very clearly, the biggest volume of threat that we faced in this country was Islamist political ideology. But what was fastest growing was the rise of the far right. And national action prescribed in 2016 
were, the, were actually that was the beacon of that particular growing problem. Mm -hmm. When I started, it was less than 5% of our casework. When I finished, it was closer to 20%. That's what we meant about grow, a growing problem, and I'm afraid you are seeing it on the streets of the United Kingdom this week. But you describe legislation that exists to, to uh, go after people in the supposed real world. What about legislation to go after them online? People will think about certain individuals basking on a, a sunbed right now and pulling strings on, on X. That must be a frustration for former colleagues of yours. It's a massive frustration, and I think the Prime Minister has been very clear. A crime in the real world, a crime online, and uh, we have to go after people who commit criminal offences online. And we have been working with so social media companies for many years. My successors will be working with them now, but trying to stop Neil, criminal activity. Just to interrupt you, are, are, they, are the platforms doing enough, though? That's the question a lot of people have now, because even some of their proprietors are engaging in saying that Britain is on the brink of civil war. I know, it's pretty disgraceful stuff, isn't it? I mean, uh, I've gone on record before of saying social media companies need to do more. The reality is, is that they only listen to governments and they listen to legislation change and they listen to advertisers who pull their revenue. Asking them to exercise social responsibility to stop these things happening seems to be a waste of time. So I agree it's entirely frustrating and they, we will have to look at in this, in this country, I'm sure, a strengthening of an already brand new piece of legislation in the Online Safety Act to do just that. Neil Bassey, thanks for your time.